when I played basketball, everything was great. I didn't have to worry about when my next meal was coming. It was all, you know, this ball and this rim and this court. You know, my role model as a basketball player was Michael Jordan, and I grew up watching him. And, um, you know, everybody wanted to be like Mike growing up, so I used to go in the backyard and do the same thing. You don't walk like that. Why are you walking like that? Jordan walked like that. And he's put this team on his shoulders. He's living proof of what happens when you really learn you can go above and beyond what you think you're capable of. It's been Dwayne Wade all season long. Dwayne came here at 22, 23 years old, hungry. He jumped right out of the building. He's Superman. Damn. Did you see that? That dude's like Flash. Oh, my. Flash is amazing. Ding. Oh, oh fuck my way. This is going to be goes. Yes! Oh. yes! They have a chance as long as Wayne's out there attacking the rim. We haven't found the right solution to deal with Wade yet. They have won this ball game on an unbelievable fourth quarter by Dwayne Wade. He became the best player in the world. Congratulations, 2006 NBA Finals MVP, Dwayne Wade. In the early 1990s, on the west side of Chicago, Michael Jordan was transforming his Bulls into an NBA dynasty. And he was also becoming the most popular athlete in the world. But just blocks away on the south side, a young kid by the name of Dwayne Wade was starting his own journey. We're at 5901 South Peru. This is the uh, place where Dwayne spent eight, nine years of his life at with me. We actually stayed here on the first floor. And as I sit here, I, I'm sad, of course, and, and then I'm happy because we had many happy years here, but we had a lot of sad years here as well. Understand, Dwayne is my only son. And I always used to ask him, who's your favorite girl? I drilled in that kid, and he'll say, you, mom. No harm could be done to him. Nobody can't do anything to him when it comes down to her giving us any kind of money to go to the store. Oh, he will get the most money. And I'm like, he this little twerp. How did he get a dollar and only got 50 cents? She always made this kid feel so loved. And I used to be like, oh. I grew up with three older sisters, and I was the only boy, so. You know, I had, to, <laughs> I had to play double dutch. I had to do everything they wanted to do, I had to do. Tregill was the third daughter and Dwayne was the baby, so her responsibility was Dwayne. So naturally, if Dwayne, if Tregill went, Dwayne had to go. She was just like, you know, the, that sister that I can chase after, follow, go somewhere with her. Even though she didn't want me to go, she wanted my younger brother tagging along, I used to always follow. I used to always have behind cars. It's like every time I look back, he'll be right there. Mom said I can go. Mom said I can go. There was this one guy who used to always just really tease me and pick on me. So this one day, I pick up my brother from kindergarten, and this guy was really big in the fourth grade. So Dwayne got so he turned around and he told the guy, leave my sister alone, and he threw his bag down like he was finna fight. This guy is standing all over, and I'm scared of him, okay? I'm looking like, oh. Don't you say that? And the guy hit him in his nose. His nose start bleeding. I'm like, no. After that day, that guy never messed with me no more. With me, he was my best friend. I always tell everybody that. Definitely my best friend. We slept in the same bed, so we talked every night. I talked her to sleep every night, um, telling her about my dreams and, you know, and telling her about my problems. You know, she was everything to me. Tregill and Duane had each other. But there were certain realities that their bond could not protect them from. Dwayne's favorite spot used to be right there. He used to sit on the stump right there, and he used to look out. 
And Dwayne would see all the activity that was going on out here because it was, uh, was drug-infested neighborhood. And he used to see the guys, it was bushes and stuff all out and around here, see the guys hiding their, their drugs and everything, and we were everybody drinking and drugging. It was just one big block of just, if we want to say sin, it was a block of sin. I was, uh, I was into a, a, a relationship with drugs and alcohol. For a young boy, I was just, I was just lost. I was confused, not really understanding what she was going through. Only thing I saw was that my mother was hurting, and um, and and that hurt me because I loved her so so dearly. It wasn't. It wasn't looking good. It just wasn't looking good. None of the guys that I grew up with did anything. I mean, none. So I didn't see anybody come out of it. And I didn't see him coming out of it. Trigel would be compelled to make a decision that would change her nine-year-old brother's life forever. She kind of tricked me. <laughs> you know, she said, um, you know, we gonna, you want to go to the movies? You want to go to the show? I'm like, yeah, let's go to the show. You know, I'm thinking some time with my sister. You know, I remember we was on a bus, and um, I lived on 59th, and I was one of them was a ride. I'm like, man, we going far, you know? And my father at the time was living on 79th, and, um, you know, we pulled up at the stop, and we got off the bus, and she was like, all right, you're closing stuff upstairs. Uh, I'll be back to get you. I'll be back tomorrow. So I'm like, okay, she come back tomorrow. He just looked at me, and he's just like, um, where are you going? I'm like, oh, I'll be back. I'm not going far, you know? Um, I'll be back. I told him I'll be back. I'll never forget his face. I think that'd be the look, because he had no clue. He's just looking up at me like, OK, if you, you know, like, if you say so, OK. Three weeks later, I'm looking out the window, like, every time a bus pulled up, I'm like, you know, where she at? But she never came back. She never came back. And I never went back, because I knew that, you know, that was best for him, you know what I mean? It was just hard to keep it, you know, to keep going through the same stuff when I know that my dad could, could help, you know? You know, it was kind of like that they didn't want me kind of feel. I kind of was mad at her for a long time for, um, for, for leaving me. I felt like she left me. For me to fall like I did, and have to be separated from Dwayne and my children. It was hard, you know. I I, I missed him. He was my he was my baby, you know. Dwayne was now beginning a new chapter in his life, and he'd have little time to feel sorry for himself as he moved in with his father and three step brothers. I went from. You know, when I was with my sisters, um, to, you know, to doing all the quote unquote girly things, to now I'm over here with all brothers and they're like, be a man, toughen up, stop crying all the time, you know? Like, yeah, my, my older brother, he was like, it was bro, unfair. He used, he used to be like me and my little, my younger brother, this is, my, this is one of my we younger brothers. Pop. We used to play against each other, we used to play with each other against him. You know, he did a lot of things that we wasn't used to, so we like, man, you gotta get harder, so. You know, we roughened them up, bottom line. It looked like a small space now, but this was this meant the world to us to have this this little bitty space that we all can't fit on now. But this was our NBA right here. This was it. This was, I was Jordan back here. I was Scotty back here. He couldn't see over us. We were all taller than him. So everything he, he put up, we were blocked. So back then, we called him lucky because whenever he hit a shot, it was luck. The toughest of the Wades was Dwayne's dad, and he was determined to make something of his boys. He'd wake us up real early in the morning to drill, left hand, right hand, you know, dribble to the right, dribble to the left. We would stay out there from morning to night. Dwayne would cry all the time. If you knock Dwayne down, here come the tears. And uh, we used to just say, get up, you can't quit. There's no quitting. How are you gonna be better than anybody else if you quit? So my father used to come out here and he used to beat us up. And um, <laughs> and you had to be, you had to become a man out here at a young age. It was his rules. I mean, there was no fouls in the backyard at all. You know, so if you go up for a shot and somebody just come and clean your clock, you better get up and dust it off. So I get it. 
I take it, bro. Come up, try to block it. Body to body. <laughs> Boom! Nah, body, yeah, body, Boom! Body, 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 body. Hey, well, okay, body to body, and I grabbed your arm because I was higher than you. Hey, Rob. Yeah. And that's when he knew right then and that young bro was growing up. Dwayne would put his backyard lessons to the test as he became a star at Richards High School. See if he reminds you of anyone. Well, I know what everybody's thinking of, uh, but uh, yeah, he uh, he has Jordan type of uh, movements, especially on the offensive end and even on the defensive end. The one word that can describe Dwayne's play is, is fearlessness. And the bigger the game, the bigger the crowd, uh, the tougher the opponent. Uh, he, he was he was never afraid. Dwayne Wade off the dribble. He was just a quiet guy that just kicked ass. We know that we're the underdogs, everybody we play. So we're going to play our heart out for 34 minutes, more than 32. We're going to keep playing. Dwayne had found his salvation on the basketball court. And he was now looking forward to playing at Marquette University for their coach, Tom Green. But there was still one obstacle that stood in Wade's way. The college entrance exam. I remember getting that last test. It was the longest walk ever to go get them scores. When I got home, I called Coach Cream. Um, I said, I'm about to open it. He said, all right, let's, let's see what it is. And when I opened it, um, I discovered that I didn't pass it. And uh, I was boo-hooing on the phone with Coach. You know, we both were shedding tears because he knew how bad I wanted to come to Marquette. I'm crying on the phone, and you know, he just told me, look, we're going, we going to go with everything is planned. And in, in another year, you'll be ready. Wade would be forced to sit out a year, but Crean would make sure that it wouldn't be a wasted one. I mean, I thought, I thought he hated me. You know, he was like, you know, every time we lost, it was kind of like, it was, you come in the locker room, and he'd just look at me, it's like, it's your fault. It's your fault that we lost. And I'm like, I'm looking around like, I ain't the one who just lost this game, you know? But he was just, he'd get on me and say, I didn't practice hard enough. I didn't make the guys better, you know, this and that. And he'd make me stand up and, you know, make me go around the room and tell people um, if they wasn't playing good. We were demanding of understanding every scouting report, of understanding what we were doing in every game, moving them up to the front of the bench. I had to sit on the bench with the coaches and take notes. He had come to me and say, All right, what, what play do you think we should run? So he was trying to make me a student of the game. I watched so much and I seen so much for when I got out there, I kind of knew what to expect. Green's tough love would pay immediate dividends as Dwayne became a force from the moment he stepped on the court. The glass on the bounce to Dwayne Wade, running the break. Back to Wade from Jackson, and Wade has 16. Rejected by Wade. How about that? He was jumping out of jams, never running out of energy. He was hungry and he was passionate, and it was just really, really exciting. Incredible. He was nasty on that court. He knew how to play the game with a, with a real killer instinct. It seemed that all of Dwayne's struggles were behind him. He had become one of the nation's best college players. He was doing well in school and he married his high school sweetheart, Savan. His life was almost perfect, almost. There was a day he wanted to fight everybody. You know, he wanted to, he, nothing was going right for him. And we realized why, because his mom was going through a lot of hard times. Duane's mother was still battling with her own demons. I remember one time he rolled on back of a picture he gave me. Um, I'm going to come back to get you, and we're going to live a fabulous life. I always thought back to those times on 59 Prairie, and I always thought back to my mother struggling, and I just said, I got to keep pushing. I got to keep pushing. Finally, Dwayne's faith would be rewarded. I went to the church down the street at the time, and I remember going in there on that particular Sunday. And I remember hearing the scripture having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. From that day, drugs, alcohol became a no-no. The party was over. That was it. That was it. Jolinda Wade would turn herself in to the police. When I did make the decision to, to turn myself in and to go back to prison, the drive was to 
to just be there for him, to get back into his life, to be a mother again. I understood. I understood what she had to do to become the woman and the mother that she wanted to be. Um, you know, the whole time, we wrote a lot of letters. I mean, back and forth, I mean, essays to each other. I told him he was my hero. He said, oh, no, 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 you're mine. And uh, he explained to me why, because he saw the hard life that I lived. And to be able to come up, pull up from it, it really encouraged him and gave him strength. Jalinda stayed in jail for 18 months. During that time, Duane became an All-American. And just as Jalinda finished serving her sentence, Duane was about to play his final home game at Marquette. I had just got out of prison. The March 5th. The game was March 8th. She was on probation. Um, so, you know, we, we begged and pleaded her probation officer to let her come to this last game. I got permission to go. But I was awkward because I had not been around this here. So I know I didn't know what we was going to do when we seen each other. I was so excited, but I was so nervous because I'm like, my mama have never seen me play. There were so many people, and I was looking like, wow, and everybody had these banners about my son. I was like, man. He's the man here. This is something real. You know, this is really, this is TV stuff you see. And I'm seeing this stuff for real about my son. Here comes Stokes with Hicks out in front. Eric Hicks. Blocked by Wade. What a block. What a defensive play by Dwayne Wade. He got out there, and that young man played. He played awesomely. Just seeing her in the, in, the, in the stands crying as, a, as the crowd rushed the floor, um, I just ran up there to her and just hugged her so tightly. I had my hair fixed very pretty that day. My son grabbed me and sweat was everywhere and my hair went crazy, so I don't know how I looked on the media, but we was just like all into the moment. It was the most exciting moment of my life. And for Dwayne. It was as if all the parts of his life were finally coming together. He was reunited with his mother. Marquette was going to the Final Four, and an NBA career was just over the horizon. These were the things he could have only dreamed of when he looked out from his stoop on 59th and Prairie all those years ago. Despite his excellent college career, Dwayne showed up at the NBA draft as an afterthought. The eyes of the basketball world were cast on LeBron James and Carmelo Anthony. James was the high school phenom with unlimited potential, and Anthony was the freshman sensation who had just led Syracuse to the national title. But for Wade, just being there was what mattered most. I knew I was gonna get drafted somewhere. That was my whole thing, I'm like, okay, I know I'm going somewhere. I don't know where it's gonna be. I don't know what pick it's gonna be. I knew that LeBron was gonna be first to Cleveland. I knew that Darko was going second to Detroit. And I knew that Melo was going third to Denver. By the time the fifth pick came, my agent came over to the table right after the fourth pick. And he like, oh, I just got off the phone with um, Randy Fun, and um, he gonna take you at five. And I'm just like, he like, don't change your expression, because the camera's around, so I'm just looking, I'm just like, Something came over my body, just I was just stuck. And then my sister started crying, and then my wife started crying. I'm like, oh my God. <laughs> and then David Stern came out like 10 seconds later and um, said with a fifth pick, and my he select, and I didn't even hear my name. Select Dwayne Wade from Marquette University. We just all started crying. It just was tears of joy, tears of happiness. And at that moment, it was like, that's it, like it's done, like you could exhale. Putting so much into it and working so hard, it was finally like, whew. Dream come true, <laughs> dream come true. I mean, I don't think I ever wanted to shake nobody's hand as bad as I wanted to shake his. And I was finally getting an opportunity to grab that hat, take that walk, go out there and shake his hand. Then it happened so fast, it seemed like it took a lot of years, but then all of a sudden it was there. And um, you know, my life started all over again. Duane was joining the Miami Heat, 
a team that was founded in 1988. The Heat had become perennial contenders in the late 1990s, but were never able to capture an NBA title. Since then, they had fallen on hard times. The year before Wade arrived, they won only 25 games and lost 57. And as they entered the 2004 season, not much was expected of them. They were a last place team whose fans had stopped showing up to their games. However, it would soon become apparent that people would be missing out on something special. That's high wire stuff. Here comes Dwayne Wade. Oh, all sorts of skills. Right down the lane for the jam. Oh my, how about that rookie? You saw the flashes of what looked like a terrific athlete and a hard-nosed competitive basketball player. Dwayne Wade with that spectacular reverse. I saw the athleticism right away. You know, he was just soaring over people, dunking on them. Taken by Wade, two on one with Theo back. And Dwayne Wade challenges the shot blocker and that gets him off the Miami bench. Wade had shown that he was a rookie worth noticing. But with the Heat still struggling for wins, he remained below the radar. I was getting no publicity. Miami Heat was on TV, zero games. Um, so, you know, it wasn't no ESPN highlights. It wasn't nothing going on in Miami. Meanwhile, LeBron and Carmelo continued to get maximum exposure. And coming up next to the game's newest hot rivalry, Carmelo Anthony against LeBron James. He's playing real well his rookie year, and yet still all you're hearing is LeBron James, Carmelo Anthony, LeBron James, Carmelo Anthony. At the 2004 rookie game, Dwayne would get the opportunity to experience the LeBron and Carmelo show in person. I had a pretty successful rookie year at the time. So I go out there and I'm thinking like, maybe okay, now people know me a little bit. And he just was like, I was really a third wheel. I'm talking about LeBron and Melo was walking up there. People was pushing me out the way to get to them. And I'm just like, eh, you know, <laughs> uh, you know, I'm here. Can I get a little love? Hey, like, just tell me your name. And what team you My name is Dwayne Wade. D-W-Y-A-N-E. So I got back at the All-Star, and I told him, I told him this is going to be a different second half of the season. You're going to see a different D-Wade, because I was so focused and I was so angry, um, you know, at, at what people were saying and what people didn't say. Wade would make sure that this would be the last time he was overlooked. Hit the slam! And that to your ever-increasing Dwayne Wade highlight reel. I just think the kid has so much talent. He almost can do anything out there he want to do on the floor, and I'm just happy to be on this team with him, man. You know, to be honest with you, he's just a great player. Oh, what a play! Oh, my God! He's Superman! When he went on a tear, he was going out there again 20-plus a night, eight to 10 assists. You know, he was just doing a little bit of everything. Rebound, Wade. Oh, oh my! Oh. A great pass by Wade. Wade would take Miami on a wild late season ride. They are at 500 for the first time this year. And he made the Heat games the place to be. Oh! Wayne Wade! Wow. Whoa, man! Wayne Wade brought fun back to Heat fans watching that team play. You saw a young team on the rise. As the year went on, Dwayne took on more and more of a load and really became the guy we were going to go to at crunch time. It is good! He did it! Leading the Heat to victory in 17 of their last 21 games, Wade had improbably transformed them into winners in just one season. And now, the playoffs awaited. I was finally on the stage to really prove and show, you know, what I can do. In the NBA, the playoffs are where reputations are made. Some players wilt under the pressure, while others thrive on it. We learned a lot about Dwayne Wade in the very first playoff game he took part in. Miami's playing New Orleans, and the game comes down to a final possession. The game is tied at 79. Come on! You gotta wanna win! Oh my all the play for me in the huddle. And I'm a rookie and I'm nervous and I'm scared, but I'm a competitor and I, I, I live for it. They let the rookie handle Wade out in front, trying to create off the dribble. Wade putting the move on Davis. 
Wade puts it up. It's yes. good. Yeah, baby. Came through. Stan Van Gundy went to the rookie and he delivered. <laughs> I think from that moment on, uh, you know, my name was known. Behind Wade, Miami won its first playoff series in four years. As Wade and the Heat nearly upset the favorite Indiana Pacers, Dwayne put an exclamation point on his rookie season. Oh, that kid's unbelievable. Wade down the middle. Hey, 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 Whoa. Wow, what a play by Dwayne Wade. And the NBA is back in Miami. By the end of the playoffs, he was recognized where he should have been all year as uh, certainly one of the best young players in the game. How you feel? Larry? How you doing, Mr. Burr? It's an honor to meet you. Hey, you're the one of the two or three best working in the league. I'll tell you that. Thank you. That means a lot. Obviously, I wish you well. Okay. All right. Good guy. How you doing, man? Yeah. How you doing? Oh, kid, how you doing? Yeah, I'm doing all right. Hey, I didn't know you were that good, did you? Yeah, nah. <laughs> Dwayne's first year in the NBA was more than he could have ever hoped for. But while he spent his summer in Europe playing for the U.S. Olympic team, it started to look as if his second year might be even better. The major headline around the league tonight focuses on the situation down in Miami. All of a sudden, the possible trades for Shaquille O'Neal and it's out of Miami. I'm like, I'm shocked. You know, at first he was like, nah, probably not. The big fella won't come. He won't come. Like, it was too good to be true. The Los Angeles Lakers and Miami Heat have agreed to a trade that will send Shaquille O'Neal, one of the greatest big men of all time, to sunny South Florida. Hello, Miami. I said hello, Miami. Shaq was the game's most dominant big man. And he also had the league's largest personality. Like I said, man, before I came to this town, man, this town was nothing, man. But now that I'm here, all right. But Shaq's persona could overwhelm his teammates. In the past, he had clashed with talented young guards like Penny Hardaway and Kobe Bryant. And now there were questions about how he and Wade would mesh. I know you guys are probably going to start talking about whose team is it. I'm letting you know now it's Dwayne Wade's team, and I'm just his big brother, and I'm just here to back him up. But the funny thing about that was I had just said that like two days in the paper before that, that it was Shaq's team hands down, and he came back and said that, but, you know, I just came back with his our team. So we can do this together, big fella. It was clear from the start that chemistry wouldn't be a problem. Oh, baby! The diesel put it in the sky. Wade took care of the rest. Wade wants Kobe around a screen, wanting floater alley, you fight Shaq! There was never a problem from day one. There really wasn't. And those two guys just hit it off. With the Lakers, look out! Oh, my! <laughs> you know, it was just beautiful watching those two guys work together. Wade, the alley -oop. and a two-hand monster jam by O'Neal! Dwayne has the perfect mix of confidence and humility, and, and I think that that's really the key to the fact that he's improved, is just emerging into stardom, to be able to accept sharing the lead role and even subordinating himself to Shaq. And instead of overshadowing Wade, Shaq would help shed light on his new sidekick. You know, first thing we had to do was get people to notice who he is. And I, and I was looking at him and like one time he stole a ball and he just whoosh, took off. I'm like, damn. Racing the clock. We able to take the Did you see that? One that dude's like Flash. Ding. Wait, high screen by Zoe. Wait to the basket. The right hand jam by Flash. So you always have to have an alter ego. Wade with the steal. Look out, here he comes. See, regularly he's Dwayne Wade, but then he turns it to Flash. Yeah, he right here. Flash right here. Hold on. Flash. What up? Shaq coming to Miami helped Dwayne grow, but I think in different ways than what people think. And I think he had a lot of influence off the court, business-wise, how to carry yourself. A lot of endorsement deals started coming my way. People wanted me. You're a bad dude, boy. Ooh -wee. 
that's my boy. Yeah, Flash. Yeah, the whole time I was doing it, I was keeping in touch with Shaq because he's a marketing genius. So I'm asking him, like, man, what should I do? How should I do it? And he like, Flash, first of all, be yourself. Dwayne's exposure to the spotlight unexpectedly landed him in People magazine. So they pulled me to the side and they say, you know, we got this from People Magazine. They're they going to name you one of the uh, 50 most beautiful people. I'm like, huh? 50 most beautiful people in what? they like, 50 most beautiful people in the world. I'm like, get out of here. He caught a lot of grief because of that. The first thing I heard was, like, come on, Dwayne, how much money did you pay to be named top 50? You know, you, you, you're not even top 10 on the Miami Heat. Right, it was the poll takes him on who's the most handsome guy in the NBA. And the poll came back for me, 65%. Name the source. Yep. Google Magazine was my Google source. Magazine. Now, what's your He's source? top 2,050. <laughs> See, that's what I was, I told you, you <laughs> But there was more than just notoriety that came along with being Shaq's teammate. There were also great expectations. You know, what a lot of people don't understand is that, you know, when you get Shaq, it is a lot of pressure. Like, he's expected to be in the championship, if not win, every year. The Heat entered the 2005 playoffs as the favorites in the East. But with Shaq injured, it would be up to Wade to rise to the occasion. A spectacular shot by Wade. Dwayne Wade with 31. The Heat a winner tonight without Shaq. Well, we was very confident, you know, even though we didn't have Shaq for majority of the playoffs. Um, but we still, you know, we won both series for a while. I was playing at a high level. We was fine. We was like, you know, if Shaq can just, you know, get healthy and bring us anything, we cool. And Shaq would be ready to help as the Heat faced the defending champion Detroit Pistons for a right to play in the finals. The experienced Pistons would prove to be worthy opponents. The defending champions right now are saying, ah, this is why we're the champs, folks. But Wade made sure that the Heat kept pace. A big Diesel who finishes with the hard flush. Rebound, Wade tracks it down. Wade's got a free one, slam the home to win. You tend to forget this is still just a second year guy. And as much as we need him, you know, he can't carry the weight of our whole team on his shoulders every single night. But with the series tied at two, Wade again looked to carry the heat in the fifth game. Here it is in game five, the heat at home. And Dwayne hit a shot that put Miami up by 20 points. Wade from 21, got it out on the wing. 15 for Wade, and he's holding his back as he goes back defensively. It was right after he made the shot that clutched at his ribs. And down to the floor is Dwayne Wade. He is gone for the night. He looks like it. He's just having a sharp pain in his side. It's catching. He's catching his breath. Forced to miss game six with a severe rib muscle injury, Wade could only watch as Detroit romped to victory. Stolen by Ben Wallace. Hamilton shovels for Ben for the jam. And the Detroit Pistons have evened up the series, winning big 91 66. The series returned to Miami for the biggest game in Heat history. And all eyes were on Dwayne Wade. Game seven is in hand, and the question of the night how much will Dwayne Wade play, and how much will he be able to contribute? And to the delight of Heat fans, Wade did play. And through three quarters, he kept their hopes alive. Crossover to the basket, up off the glass, and in, Dwayne Wade. Oh, he's still got a little flash in him there. Now Wade's going to go left side. Wade under the basket, off the glass, and in. Oh, my goodness, how did he do that? He had the amazing third quarter. Uh, he started to believe that the miracle could happen. With a trip to the NBA Finals only 12 minutes away, Wade and the Heat were on the verge of closing the Pistons out. The DJ, DJ dribble drive. Pass under the basket, intercepted. A huge turnover, Miami. But with the game hanging in the balance, it would not be Miami, but Detroit who would make the decisive plays. Hamilton under the basket and up and in for Hamilton. Detroit's got the game in hand. And the 
game's final seconds, Wade would still have one last chance to rescue the Heat. Wade, gonna have to get a shot off. Long shot by Wade off the rim. That's gonna be the season. Boy, this is disheartening. The Detroit Pistons have defeated the Miami Heat in Game 7 of the Eastern Conference Final. It just really stuck a knife in, in here. When I went in locker room, man, it was just quiet forever. I had a good shot, it just came up short. I'm sure I'm gonna play that play in my mind a million times. But unfortunately, you know, it just came up short. After just two years in the league, Dwayne had become an elite player. But despite all of his success, it was ultimately failure that would provide his greatest motivation. The man said, let's get back to play Detroit. <laughs> All of a sudden, you're like, you know, I wish we could just get back to that series. Ready, go. That's it, D, that's it, that's it. Even before the season started, Dwayne would begin his quest by pushing himself harder, and he would have to. Miami would add a new group of veterans to complement their one-two punch. But in just the second game of the season, Shaq would go down with an injury. But Shaq is hurt. This is not good. This is not good. And without their big man, the Heat were unable to jail. Oh, what a horrible looking shot by Antoine Walker. The Heat with a long way to go. Posey for three. Missed it. That's it. It's all over here in Denver. And this will be the Heat's fourth straight loss. None of those trades are working. The Miami Heat. They have a lot of talented players, but it don't fit together in no shape, form whatsoever. With the season slipping away, the legendary Pat Riley would take over as head coach. I have a responsibility to this team and to the players that I traded for, picked, signed. And I think right now, at this moment, that I'm the best person to do that. But even Riley would be left searching for answers. Pat Riley going the first half of the season for Miami, a 41-game disappointment. On February 9th, the Heat seemingly hit a low point as the Dallas Mavericks beat them by 36 points. This has been a disaster for Miami tonight. And as fate would have it, the next game would be against the Detroit Pistons. We come back home and play the toughest team to us at the time to play, and they manhandling us too. Out comes Prince. Prince leading the break. Pretty pass to Hamilton, and it goes in. Prince. Arroyo. Oh, Prince. Pat Riley concerned his team down double figures. Trailing by 13 points in the fourth quarter, the Heat season seemed like it was on the road to nowhere. Something, something got to give. And um, I just took it upon myself to say, all right, <laughs> let me see what I can do. And what Wade would do was the improbable. Watch oh, that! Oh, oh, Wade flips it in! Alley up to Wade. Oh, beautiful wow. turnaround around from Wade. Oh, oh. 13 point lead early in the period. It's down to two. Wade the pump. Tie game again. And he has scored the last 15 points for the Miami Heat. The Heat will go for the win. They have not led the entire second half. Wade puts it up. Puts it in! Miami Heat with a huge victory. Wade had scored the Heat's final 17 points, including the game winner. But the dramatic comeback would ultimately take on an even greater significance. Detroit game was, was really a watershed game. From that point on, his teammates accepted, you are the guy that's going to get this done for us. And he became uh, not only our, our go-to guy, but a, a real in incredible leader for us. Behind the oh, oh, to the rim. Oh, oh. Yes, and the foul. It's a tie game. Emerging from Shaq's shadow, Wade would now embrace a new role. Oh my! What a play by Dwayne Wade! What did you tell yourself at halftime that you said, hey, I got to do something to make this game up? Blocked by Dwayne Wade out of bounds! Get that shot out of here! In the last six weeks of the season, I would say at least a half a dozen games 
that we were down double digits in the fourth quarter, and he brought us back. The game is tied. Is this similar to the last game where you just out there flat out saying we're not going to lose? Whatever you have to do, we're going to win this game. Now you for Wade. How about that? It's the 17th time he's had double figures in a fourth quarter this year. You had fans chanting MVP, MVP every time you went to the free throw line. The Heat would finish the regular season on a roll. Wade, look out! Oh, my! The playoffs were coming, and Wade was ready. And gang, after 82 games, the playoffs are underway. The Chicago Bulls would be Miami's first playoff opponent, and Wade had something special for them. Beautiful pass for the morning stuff! Oh, uh, Dwayne Wade finds a way to get the assist. Nothing was going to stop him from taking Miami back to Detroit for their rematch, and he made sure there would be no letdown as they sent the Bulls home for the summer. Oh, the steal by Wade! And then he'd do the same to the New Jersey Nets. Kid, rookie, kid, bounce pass, intercepted by Wade, and that's the ball game! Miami is off to the Eastern Conference Championship! A steal by Wade, and it pulls it out! G. Wade would not be denied there! Finally, Wade would have his chance for revenge. You know, this was a team that had held down the Eastern Conference for the last couple of years. This is a team that we had trouble beating and that we lost to the year before. Let's go, man, let's go! Let's roll, let's roll. Let's roll. It frustrated him. It motivated him. He didn't want to lose that way again. The Pistons would never know what hit them. Wade, right down the gut! Right hand jam, Wade! Wade, tied up. Fires away. It's good! Miami up by 19. D Wade wanted that challenge. It's like your basic kung fu movie. You know, you're the young master coming up, and hey, you ain't nothing until you beat Chen Wali right there. Wade finding an open area inside, drives hard, draws the oh. foul. Oh, oh, Wade puts it in. That is one of the greatest shots <laughs> made in playoff history. Beating Detroit was just finally like getting that monkey off your back. Getting a standing ovation. He will get a chance on the NBA's biggest stage in his first NBA Finals. To finally beat him was just like, you know, it felt like a championship ball in itself. And for the first time in this franchise's history, 18 years in the league, the Miami Heat are off to the NBA championship. Where you going, Dwayne? Where you going? Man, we're going to the finals, man. Welcome to the 2006 NBA Finals! The Heat were riding high as they entered the Finals, but few people were giving them much of a chance to beat the heavily favored Dallas Mavericks. I'm fully expecting that Dallas is going to come out and have a decisive performance. I don't think Miami realizes the Dallas Mavericks are going to present more problems than they faced with the Detroit Pistons. And as the series began, the prognosticators would prove to be dead on. Stackhouse for three. Stackhouse, long three. Got it. And fouled by Wade. Three fouls away. Stackhouse's tray. Miami is, quite frankly, out to lunch. Off to the races, Harris finds Stackhouse. Flicks the damn pin. Oh, yeah. Big two-hand flush. And the Mavericks have a commanding two games. A nothing lead as they totally embarrassed the Heat. Dallas was at a level higher than us. And we had to go back home. We had to figure out a way to stop them from doing everything they wanted to do. But as game three unfolded, Dallas continued to toy with Miami. George steps into a three, looks good, and it is. You could not have scripted this any better if you are on the coaching staff of Dallas. The Dallas Mavericks are running a clinic. Miami have to try to get their act together. With six and a half minutes to go, Dallas had a 13-point lead. Dallas is eating the heat alive. Timeout Miami. On the verge of going down three games to nothing in the series, the heat season was on life support. In six minutes, we looking up and we see fans walking out of the stadium. You know, people are like, this is over. When we took a timeout, 
Pat brought us all back. He said, I know you guys don't want to end your season like this. Come on, guys. Come on, 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 come on. Pat challenged everybody, said, hey, we're talking about our season. We're talking about our season. Come on, come on, come on. First thing came out of Dwayne's mouth was, I'm not going out like that. Wade trying to find an opening, backs it in. 32 for Wade, but his team's still down by 11. I ain't going out like this. I'm going to go out gunning. I'm going to go out shooting. Wade drives left baseline, and he got to the rim and able to score with a foul on Dallas. Wade Wade breathes life back into the Miami cause. Wade understood, I've got to take over this series, or we're not going to win this. Wade dribbles to the free throw line, the jump shot, and got it. Don't count Miami out yet. They have a chance as long as Dwayne's out there attacking the rim. Wade has brought Miami to within five. And he brought us back. And he brought us back, you know, single-handedly. And he's got it wide left beyond the stripe. Wade, left baseline, wide open. The jumper, good. This is absolutely shocking. Against all the odds, Wade had answered the call when his team needed him the most. The alley -oop tipped up in the air, and Miami has done the improbable! They have won this ball game on an unbelievable fourth quarter by Dwayne Wade! And the Miami Heat right back in the NBA Finals. I just felt so proud walking off that court. Yeah, I didn't show it. You know, I went in the locker room like I do it every day. I felt so proud. Wade had done more than win one game. He had changed the series. Dwayne Wade all the time. Dwayne Wade rose to a level that we have never seen here with the Miami Heat. The Miami Heat have evened up this series. We haven't found the right solution to deal with Wade yet. It was as if whatever Miami needed, Wade would provide. Foul line jumper, good! Here he is standing on the foul line in game five. If he makes the free throws, the Heat go up 3-2, going back to Dallas. Wade with 42. Nice. Heat leads. Two swishes. Heat wins by one in overtime. They go to Dallas. Step back, Wade, the jumper got it in, Dwayne Wade. Over that time, he became the best player in the world. He's the best player in the world at that time. Your final test. Final challenge, okay? Come on. Nine point one remaining, and Dallas can tie it with a three-pointer. Terry, eight seconds. I'm seeing him come down the court, and I'm seeing him go up in motion. He's just sound like, he can't hit this shot. It's not scripted this way. And it's my moment. Terry, high right side. Terry puts it up. Won't go. Way to hold on. And the Miami Heat are champions of the basketball world. Woo! Won the NBA championship for the first time. I just was like in another world. I was running around screaming like, like a kid once again. That's something I knew about him as a little boy. When he accomplished something, he gets all giddy and, and he just skips and he gets so excited. I saw it. 2006 Miami Heat! It wasn't about him, it was about the team. Shaq was like, hey, D, go up there, go up to the front. I'm like, for what? He's like, for the MVP award. I'm like, oh, oh. <laughs> you know, I guess I was. He averaged 34.7 points. Congratulations, 2006 MVP, Dwayne Wade. Like Shaq couldn't do something. And it was crazy because I knew he was going to take the trophy from Davis Durham. And he took the trophy from David Stern and he bowed to me and I bowed back and it was kind of like a passing of the torch. You know, that feeling of being the best, that feeling of being number one was just better than I thought it can ever feel. It's our legacy, it's how we do it. It's how we do it, baby. Dwayne Wade's sublime performance had put him at the top of the basketball world. All right, Chuck, leave me alone. I'm trying to make this putt. If you make this putt, I'll put you in my five. Are you serious? At the age of 24, he was a champion and a celebrity. Yeah, 
I'm sorry, were you busy? For some people, achieving success can change their priorities. But for Dwayne, it reaffirmed them. It's great that he's become an all-star player. It's great that he's uh, won a championship, that he was MVP of the finals, that he's become as popular as he's become. But the thing that's really great to me is to see him handle this and remain humble. Thanks, Dwayne. No problem, buddy. Right. I know that my name won't be on the tip of people's yeah, tongues for the rest of my life. So, you know, when I had opportunity, I want to make the last impression on people. One lasting impression that has never left Dwayne is how hard life can be for a child growing up in a difficult world. I think he feels as though this responsibility of his to try to find some way where he can give back, you know, and I think that his passion is young people. If you believe in yourself and you work hard, you gotta work hard, though. Yeah, I know. If you work hard and believe in yourself, you can do it. You can do anything you want. When you see a kid and you see so much in him, you see what you can hopefully bring out of him. It makes you excited. Thank you, buddy. Thank you, man. The integrity is not just for cameras. The integrity is not just for on stage. Just real integrity where behind closed doors, he's holding on to these values. To have him be a father of two boys and to see him, something about him stands up. Please welcome 2007 Father of the Year, Dwayne Wade. I'm still young myself, and I'm still becoming a man, and I have to raise men. And um, it's a tough, it's a tough job, but it's an exciting job. You know, he, every time him and my nephew play, he always say, "I'm D Wade," and I feel good um, until I walked in his room yesterday, and um, he was LeBron James. <laughs> it just really, um... Dwayne had become a role model on and off the court. And as he entered his fourth season in the league, he would find that he had new expectations to live up to. When you become a great player, you, you learn how hard it is to do it night in and night out. When you do it night in and night out, now the next challenge is, can you do it year in and year out? The truly great ones have that they got that inner drive. There's, there's a motor in there that just won't let them let down. Wade was looking to build upon his legacy, but it became obvious from the beginning of the 2007 season that that would prove to be a difficult task as nothing seemed to go right for the Heat. But even as age and injury threatened to ruin their year, Dwayne would not let them give up. Down to the last second, he makes his move with five. He fades away and hits with 1.3 to go. Off the glass, the Heat by two. But eventually, even Dwayne would succumb to injury. As uh, they examine his shoulder, Dwayne in a great deal of pain. But obviously, the huge concern here is. Uh, for Dwayne Wade as he is taken off via the wheelchair, and you rarely see this. After dislocating his shoulder, Dwayne would face the decision of either having season-ending surgery or risk further injury by playing hurt. There wasn't one guy that said he should come back. They all said he should sit out, he should fully heal, he should make sure he's right. But for Wade, it was an easy choice to make. We had a lot of older guys on our team. You know, Gary might have been his last year. Lonzo might have been his last year. Shaq is getting older. So, you know, I want to come back and help defend that title. He said, I'm not going to let my teammates down. I'm not going to let the city down. I'm not going to let the franchise down. I'm going to go out there and try to do the best that I can do, you know, with a broken wing. Despite the pain, Wade would valiantly lead his heat against the Chicago Bulls. Whoa! still averaged 27 a game, <laughs> you know, and he was really hurt. Ultimately, it wouldn't be enough as the Heat lost. But Wade, in some ways, had revealed as much in defeat as he had the year before in victory. It defines your dedication, your commitment to the team, and the sacrifices that you make for it. As an NBA superstar, 
Wade has had many spectacular moments. But it is not his soaring flights to the basket or his game-winning shots that define him. For Dwayne's true worth lies not in what he has done, but how he has done it. I think when you get a silver spoon handed to you, it's really too easy. I like people that got to build themselves up to make what you make themselves what they are. He's done that. Don't forget, this is where we came from. You know, don't forget, this is how it was. And this is just a blessing that we're here. I believe that's even why he's pulling so much in the community, because he knows there's so much more that he got left to do. It still haven't dawned on us. You know, we'll both get with each other, and he'll put his hand around me, and I said, have you arrived there yet? Not yet, Mom. I'm living a dream today. Everything that I dream, I feel like I almost got it. I'm like, man, maybe I should have dreamed a little more when I was younger. I'm one of the goofiest person you really want to meet. Put the mic down here. Put the mic down here. When I shoot, is what it say. That was easy. That's it. I'm just, I'm, just, I'm just two months out of surgery. That's it. Just two months out of surgery. Everybody has short shorts. Yeah, we still do. We went under our pants. <laughs> <laughs> I got handles. Y'all don't know about. Just a little fun. Just a little fun for the kids. Oh, my nephew, what you got? Hey, look, don't shoot to get me out, because it ain't going to work. Just shoot to make shots. Your favorite basketball player? Wait, wait. You just saying that because I'm standing in front of you? I got goofy brothers. You know, I got a goofy family. You know, I'm not an exception to it. I'm, I'm the goofiest one, I tell you that. You know, I'm always cool, calm, and collective, but I'm telling you, I love to laugh. Again. You don't throw that key to the, to the, to the, to the coach. <laughs> hey, coach. <laughs> this ain't nothing right here but a little trophy. Hey, McAdoo, you got one of these? No! Some Bob McAdoo ain't got. <laughs> this Bob McAdoo is a great player, but he ain't got one of these. <laughs> this is Dwayne Wade of the World Champions, Miami Heat. And you're watching. Yeah. What are you watching? You know, when you're on a big stage and you know, the bright lights, this is what you always dreamed of. You know, so you try to go out there and you put everything that you learned over the your course of your years, you put it out on the floor. And, you know, that's what the finals is about. Dwayne Wade has been preparing for his finals moment ever since his childhood in Chicago. 
the first thing that always come to mind when I think about you know the great run that the Bulls had when I was a kid was probably that first one. You know when they played the Lakers with Bezzy Johnson and the seeing you know Jordan take over in games and and the, of course the shot you know when he went up flipped it up. You know, that's a shot a lot of kids went in the backyard, especially me, try to do right away. So I watched closely to the Jordans and the Pippins, you know, in Chicago. And I just seen, you know, when it was time, it seemed like every time it was time for him, you know, to make a play, to make a shot, he always did it. He always came through. And I think that's why he was loved so much in sports, you know, because, you know, he did it. You know, it seemed like every time. And, you know, when you grow up, you want to do the same thing. Wade finding an open area inside, drives hard, draws the foul. Oh, oh Wade puts it in. So I try to put it upon myself, but as I get the opportunity to with my teammates, it's, it's to make the big play. You know, it's not always the shot, but it's the big play. And, uh, you know, I've been fortunate enough to do that a couple times so far in my young career. And for the first time in this franchise's history, 18 years in the league, the Miami Heat are off to the NBA championship. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. For everything to take off for me so fast, it's just mind boggling to me and probably to anybody. But I worked hard for it and hopefully people think I deserve it. Where you going? Man, we're going to the finals, man. Oh, what a play! He jumped right out of the building! Did you see that? He's Superman! Hi, I'm Dwayne Wade. I play point guard for the Miami Heat. I'm 6'5, 210 pounds. I was the fifth pick in the 2003 NBA draft, and the strongest part of my game is making others better. I grew up in Chicago, Illinois, Chi Town's finest. My go to move is the basic crossover. No, I just had to overcome the, the streets of, of Inglewood growing up in Chicago with all of the game banging, the drugs. Everybody in the neighborhood doing it. You know, I had to overcome that with living with a single mom. I'm the only boy, so. And it seemed like the right thing for me to do at that time would be to, to, to go to the streets and, and get, the, get the fast money. It was hard, but you know, I went to basketball and I waited on my money. Wade from the corner. Wait again. Yes. He made sure that time. For Wade, look yes. out. Challenges the shot blocker, and that gets them off the Miami bench. Chicago players, man, we try to bring finesse. We try to bring toughness all in one. You know, guys from Chicago, you know, while growing up watching Jordan, that's where we got our finesse from. And growing up watching the Bulls, period, that's where we got our toughness from. So, I mean, it's just, that's the way we play. Bridges High School. I didn't play varsity until my junior year. It's been a lot put into the way I play. And I just was hungry. I knew that um, I wanted to one day at least have a chance, an opportunity to do what I'm doing now, and that's playing in the NBA. I just wanted the opportunity, and I got it. You're swayed. You gotta love that stuff. I'm a playmaker, man. It, you know, when they told me that they wanted me to run the point, you know, I just welcomed it all because I know it's gonna be a lot of criticism. Well, he's in the two guard, he can't do this, but it's gonna make me work harder. If you got a dream, you know, your dreams can come true. Because if you ask anybody who know me, if they don't nobody think I'll be sitting there right now with this Miami Heat jersey on. But hard work and dedication to what you love, it can come true. first experience of organized basketball wasn't good. I actually never really played. You know, uh, I used to sit on a bench a lot. Wayne's come a long way from those early days. Though only 22 years old, his college experience and role as a husband and father gives him a different perspective than most NBA rookies. Last of this time, there was a, a lot of stuff going on. You know, I was in college, I was in the um, NCAA tournament. You know, I, I was going through a great season at Marquette, uh, winning the championship for the first time in a while. My son was still growing up young, my wife, my new wife. So I had a lot of stuff going on at the time and a lot of stuff to deal with. Introduction, Vaughn, you can do the introduction. Um, I'm Savon. This is Tanya, my special. This is Eddie, my buddy. And we're on TV. <laughs> You know, you got to show the people that's close to you that you love, um, you know, some of your joy so they can look.
Considering Dwayne's down-to-earth personality, it seemed natural that he would step away from the glitz and glamour to show his appreciation for the history of the game. How you doing? Hey, how you doing? Oh, Ken, how you doing? Yeah, I'm doing all right. Hey, I didn't know you were that good, did you? Yeah, nah. <laughs> I'm looking to meet a lot of different people. A lot of different people I grew up watching, you know, different actors, actors, other basketball players that, you know, this is the only weekend you can really be a fan. How you doing, Mr. Wallen? How you doing, Mr. Bird? It's an honor to meet you guys. You're the one of the two or three best looking players. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I mean, like, yeah, I wish you well. All right. Good guy. How you doing? You know, you are having a hell of a rookie year. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. And I often use your name. I say, it's great. All the attention's going to Carmelo and LeBron while Dwayne Wade and Chris Bosch are developing as great young players. Thanks. That's my whole life. You know, that's me. Um, a lot of people always overlook me for some reason. So, you know, I always take that as an encouragement to go out there and try to do, you know, my best. And, and my best is, you know, proving to people that I should be or I am one of the best players. And, you know, hopefully I get the recognition. As game time approached for the Got Milk Rookie Challenge, LeBron James and Carmelo Anthony commanded most of the attention. But even LeBron acknowledged it wasn't just a two-man show. You know, when two, you know, two good players join together like that, I think it's going to be real fun. You know, we bring so much to the game and, you know, not just me and Melo, you know, the rest of the guys that's on the team too. Then four, go down and get three, and five's getting three. The three's coming over here. There you go. Bam! Three! That's it. That's one. There Rookie class of soul strong. Dwayne Wade 101. We got to beat these guys. Yo, Tyrus, I want to win this game. Wade! Come on, man. I hope so. Where am I where I'm going? I'm going to the hoop. <laughs> LeBron James with a reverse slam. Hey, let's get serious. Mel. They need to tighten up the deal. Oh! We don't have to shoot a lot of quick jump shots. We, don't, we can drive that ball to the basket, keep it spicy, keep attacking. Hey, LB, let's run. And the steal by James. I'm going to throw you a hoop. Oh, pass down. There they are, Carmelo and LeBron, having a great time. James and Anthony didn't disappoint, while Wade also proved he was a rookie of distinction. You get out there with some of the best rookies and sophomores, first and second year players, and I try to show what I can do a little bit, and it's time to be a fan of the game, watch the dunk contest tomorrow, watch the all-star game, and go out and just have fun. That's what it's time to do. My first time meeting LeBron, what was we, at Chicago camp? Yeah. And um, we was um, in there getting physicals. You know how we got to get physicals for hours. Yeah. And LeBron ain't had to get with one physical. That was some boys. You know why? <laughs> why is that? Because I'm who I am. <laughs> he came in the way he is now, loud, you know, <laughs> loud talking to everybody. Well, I'm D-Wade. <laughs> well, I'm D-Wade. I'm BKG. I'm D-Wade. Come on, I'm working on my shit up your head. <laughs> My respect for him for being a high school player that, that changed in the game and that was coming right out and had a lot of, you know, a lot of hype behind him, man, and we just connected. LeBron was the phenom, and from day one, he lived up to the hype. LeBron James comes the other way. There's your first James Jam of his career. Welcome to the NBA. While the low-key Wade used his buddy's fame as motivation. Oh, what a play! Dwayne Wade exploding for the dunk. I don't think I would be where I'm at right now if I didn't enter in the league with LeBron because I was under the radar, so it made me hungry. It made me play a lot harder, especially in my rookie season. Wade and LeBron have emerged as the top of their draft class and become friendly rivals just like a famous duo from the past. Magic and Bird, they went at it, but you know, off the court, they share that same respect for one another. And these two guys are, are doing the same thing. Playing with both guys, there's a, a conscious effort of, of looking to see what one another is doing uh, throughout the season. LeBron still with the basketball, comes into the lane, no look pass to Murray, LeBron with nine assists. I'm always, you know, getting the, getting the scores out of the game and seeing what he did, you know, I, most of the nights I see is almost a triple-double, and I'm like, man, <laughs> you know, I got to step my game up. They are boys, so I think both guys are trying to, to, to state the claim on who's the best player in their draft class. 
they do push each other on the floor and they're very competitive. And you know, to see them go head to head is something special. And on April 1st of last season, they staged a memorable shootout. Man, we still talk about that game to this day, man. Instant classic. The thing is to me is that the night before, you know, I'm I'm hanging out at his house. We go to the movies, we watch like I think we go see ATL. We hanging out as buddies. And then we come to the arena and it's we going at it. Wade being guarded by James. Here's Wade on the drive again. How did he get to the rim that time? Great players know when to answer. That's LeBron James oh. with a three. And LeBron James just said it Wade. Wade, let's go, baby. Let's go, baby. He knows it's about those two guys. To see them uh, try to will their team to win was remarkable. And on the rebound, Wade has it turned away from Marshall. Off the reverse, what a move by Wade. Unbelievable. The superstars going back and forth, but James comes right back and answers again. My, oh my, how this one is heated up. That shows, you know, the way that uh, our career is going to go when we play each other. It's going to be games, it's going to be nice, where we're going to both put you know, our teams and say, let's go. But that game would just be a preview of their playoff performances. Against the Washington Wizards, LeBron showed his true brilliance by both carrying the burden and sharing it. And the Cavaliers get something they like to win it. And look at the long arms of Brendan Haywood. Hughes to play it in. Foul James. LeBron to the hoop for the win! He's oh got it! Right back in the hands of LeBron James. Here's your trap. They get it out of his hands. Damon Jones puts it in! There was no doubt in my mind that LeBron was going to make the right play. He doesn't care who scores what, who makes the win in basket. If we win, it's a victory for all of us. It's always been like that to me. Uh, I never loved the success of just an individual. It's all about team with me, man. And if there's no team success, there's no me. And when the Cavs played the Pistons, LeBron got an unexpected pep talk. You know, me being his boy, I'm watching the game, and I'm going to tell him what I see. And I want to let him know that, you know, everything that he was doing, uh, you know, was seen. You know, that the world, we watching, and, you know, we see the performance that he putting on. Their series was over with, with New Jersey at the time. He just he said, was, hopefully he was going to be able to see me in the next round. I told him for that team um, to go, you know, past the Pistons, and we was next. We was next in line. I said, you're going to have to do more. And he took it up. Uh, not nice to where it was one rebound away from winning that series. But that rebound never came. And when the Cavs lost in seven games, LeBron could only sit back and watch Wade in the finals. And when the Heat fell behind Dallas, James reached out to his friend. It was after game two, man. I just let him know, hey, Dallas took care of business at home, which they were supposed to do. Now it's time for you to go home, take care of business, man. Don't let them come to Miami and win a game. Wade puts it in. Miami leads. The main thing he was telling me, man, you know, when it was one game to the next, you know, he was just saying, you know, do what you do, play how you play. Time for Key Wade. And on his cape. Wade pulls up. Bang! Oh. Wade, Wade, again! Oh, he responded to that, man. He, he won three straight games. I told him, game six, man, let's close it out. We don't want to give him, don't give him no life. The Heat need a basket this possession here. Wade will pop out. Daniels will pick him up and spins inside. Step back, Wade, the jumper got it in, Dwayne Wade. Boy, the Heat are sitting pretty right now. If there was one guy that I wanted to win the NBA championship besides myself, it was Dwayne Wade. The Miami Heat won the NBA championship. Wade had waited three years, but he finally had something that LeBron didn't a championship ring. Say a friend come over to your house and he got something that you wanted, but at the time you just can't get it, you can't have it, you know what I'm saying? So you're like, wow, man, I got to do anything to get that. You mind, dog? <laughs> he can't have it. I mean, I'll let you look at it, you know what I mean? I might even let you hold it for a minute, but I'm going to have to get that back. <laughs> Wade against you. Wade, Wade, right to the rim. 
No more passes. <laughs> no more turnovers. <laughs> Wade spin cycle. Beautiful move by Dwayne Wade. And how many times have we said that in these playoffs? And they said that Vince Carter was unguardable. <laughs> Wade spinning and puts it up for O'Neal. Oh, that is ridiculous. Wade looking. Pulls up. Banks it in. Tie game with 2.8 remaining. The remarkable Dwayne Wade with 39. Kid fires a three. O'Neal on the box out. Unleashes beautifully to Dwayne Wade. Unbelievable pass by Shaquille oh. O'Neal. He throws it 90 feet. Great catch. Got a 360 dunk on it. Oh, Wade behind the back. What a throw. And it up for Bobby. Dwayne Wade finds a way to get the assist when everybody crowds him. I don't know how he did that. Trying to create off the dribble by Wade putting the move on Davis. There it is, Wade. Yes! With 1.3 to go in the fourth quarter, the rookie Dwayne Wade has given Miami a two point lead. Gave it to the Dwayne Wade, cutting from the top of the key and dumped it over Jermaine O'Neal. Whoa! Wow, what a play by Dwayne Wade. Peyton zigs and zags, sends it out to Wade. He attacks down the lane. Wade scooped it in through the foul. 